we discuss uh, updates uh, relative to the um, uh, new um, uh, drugs that are now uh, targeting Keras uh, mutation in lung cancers. And what we actually know is that Keras mutation is the most common driver, oncogenic driver across several cancer types, and specifically in osmosis cell lung cancer, Keras mutation can be identified in up to 30% of patients, and so encompassing a significant fraction of all patients that uh, every year is diagnosed with uh, metastatic in osmosis cell lung cancer. And yeah, our community over the last decades uh, considered Keras measles lung cancer as a unique homogeneous disease. Uh, but actually, we learned over the last uh, years that each of the different Keras variants we can identify in lung cancer, but also in other tumor types, such as colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancers, uh, are actually unique and are associated with different genomic uh, features, uh, different transcriptomic profiles, and also a unique um, genomic background and uh, mutational signatures. And so this is a particularly important because when we think about how to target this mutation uh, in lung cancers or other cancer types, we really need to account for how heterogeneous uh, these mutations are. Um, now we still use immunotherapy as first-line option for patients with each of these mutations, can still see DNV, but in general, with for all curious middle lung cancers, the first-line therapy is immunotherapy, either alone or in combination with chemotherapy, but we now have data from several early phase clinical trials of Keras inhibitors that have shown that the direct targeting on Keras, G2LC specifically, variant uh, is possible and responses have been reported in 30 to 40% of patients treated with these covalent irreversible G2LC inhibitors. There are now two uh, drugs, sotorasib and atagrasib, that have been um, uh, investigated in phase one, two trials, and actually only a few weeks ago, the results of the first phase three trials comparing directly sotorasib versus standard of care chemotherapy in a phase three randomized uh, trial has shown that sotorasib uh, excelled over chemotherapy in terms of progression-free survival and overall survival. Um, however, in this study, we really didn't see difference in overall survival, which of course is a uh, important endpoint. It was not at the primary endpoint of this study. Uh, progression free survival was the primary endpoint and was met. But the lack of improvement in overall survival certainly raised some concern in the community. We were hoping in better uh, results in general in terms of progression free survival and also overall survival. The fact that there was no difference, however, in overall survival uh, can be explained by different uh, reasons. There was a 34% crossover, uh, and so many patients in the chemotherapy arm eventually received a Keras inhibitors after uh, this is progression. So this is something that we should think of uh, when we interpret these results. Although this crossover was not high uh, uh, enough to completely explain the lack of benefit. Um, uh, the lack of difference in terms of uh, overall survival. It is also true that this is the first generation Keras inhibitors that we have. And so we certainly hope that with next generation drugs um, and next generation uh, Keras inhibitors, we may further improve clinical outcomes in patients with uh, Keras G2LC uh, mutation. But as of today, uh, for patients who have a disease progression, first line immunotherapy, in general, uh, Keras G2LC blocked with sotorasib, which is FDA approved and NCCN approved. Uh, also recommended, uh, should be considered as potential second line option for these patients. But in addition to the Keras G2C mutation, there are several other variants that have now been um, targeted with direct inhibitors. Uh, the G2LD is one of these mutations. Uh, Keras G2LD is a, a little bit of a different Keras variant. We learned, um, and our group has tried to really examine the uh, unique features of the mutation in a recent retrospective multi center study. Uh, we really think that this is a different variant. It's associated with never smoking history. Up to 30% of patients with this mutation are never smokers, while in general, curious mutant lung cancers, particularly curious usual C mutant lung cancers, arise in current or um, former smokers in 97% of cases. And it also uh, has a unique immunophenotypic features of lower immune cells, CD8 T cells. Uh, this um, un unique features also translate into uh, worse outcome to standard care immunotherapies, um, 
These tumors are also lower mutational burden, for instance, compared to non D cancers. And all these features contribute to explain why uh, we are seeing worse uh, and inferior clinical outcomes to PD-1 monotherapy uh, compared to other carcinoids. And so we really need to improve outcomes in this patient population. Uh, now we have drugs that are potentially targeting carcinoid D mutant lung cancers or carcinoid D mutant cancers in general. Uh, and targeting carcinoid D is particularly complex because it's different from the G2LC, uh, particularly uh, has, uh, is much more frequently loaded with GTP. Uh, and so it's present uh, in the cells in the active confirmation, while irreversible covalent inhibitor of the G2LC uh, would bind the G2LC variant in the inactive GDP bound confirmation. And so, you know, we, there, are, there were some uh, challenges that, um, to the, the drug development for the carcinoid variant. But these challenges have been overcome through the development of irreversible inhibitors. And now we have the MRTX1133, which is a new direct keras uh, G12D reversible inhibitors that can target G2LD into its active and inactive form. And preclinical studies are very encouraging and are showing that responses to this drug can be observed in different cancer types uh, harboring the G2LD mutation. Uh, but there is an, an entire new uh, novel um, uh, therapeutic approach to cross variants. And specifically, this has been disclosed by Revolution Medicine uh, that has developed the so-called uh, three-complex Keras inhibitors. These are new inhibitors that leverage an entirely different mechanism of action uh, that is shared with uh, immunosuppressive drugs. And uh, it's, these drugs can bind uh, to the Keras variant um, G2LD, but also other uh, variants actually into its uh, active conformation. Therefore, these are also called ras on inhibitors. And we really have uh, two compounds that are very promising, the RM036, which is a Keras G2LD RAS on inhibitor that is shown preclinical activity. But we also have the RM6236, which is a pan-RAS inhibitor. You can target different Keras variants. And again, preclinical studies, mostly using um, mice clinical trials, have shown that across different tumor types, such as lung cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, but across different Keras mutations, g C, D, B, and others, uh, these drugs can produce response. And so these are now in clinical trials, and we really hope to see the results of these, um, of these clinical trials to see if this preclinical efficacy translating to clinical efficacy in patients with uh, cancers harboring the Keras mutations.